Hello, everybody. Welcome to the week one AMA Ask Me Anything for Project X. So I've got Tim Jordan here. Tim, how's it going? I'm that, trying to do a small X. X. Is that <laughs> a small X? No, we got to do it with the arm. Like, like you own this, so I have to like take back seat. I don't want to step <laughs> on your Okay. Toes. All right. No worries. No worries. Where, where are you actually at in the world right now? I'm actually in my office, shockingly enough, in Alabama. I know that seems like a shocker because I'm never here, but here I be. All right. All right. Cool. And we, uh, I'm here in Irvine, California, at Helium 10 headquarters in the famous podcast room over here. And we've got tons of questions that you guys have already submitted that we're just about to jump into. But if you're just joining us live right now, um, save your questions until a little bit later so that uh, I can actually throw them up on the screen. So if you want to get your question answered live, if you haven't submitted it, in the comments or on Facebook. We already grabbed all those that were in the comments on episodes one and two and the ones that were on Facebook. But if you want to get your question answered live, make sure to put it on the chat. It probably is on the right of your screen right there. So let's go ahead. Do you, do you have the questions open there too, um, Tim? Yes, I was struggling a second ago to get everything pulled up, but I've got them. And okay. just uh, as a recap, it just as recap for everybody that's watching this, this is the AMA to ask me anything that is following episodes one and two of Project X, episodes one and two. So if you're watching this on YouTube six months from now, this AMA is not going to match up if you just finished episode six, right? So this is the AMA for episodes one and two. And basically, as we release these two episodes, the first episode is talking about kind of like strategy and theory and understanding how to use Amazon. Amazon's not dead. And the second one, starting to differentiate and define what a keyword is versus a product. We got mountains of questions. And I will go on the record and say, I noticed all of you that had all of the comments about my short shorts. I got it loud and clear. <laughs> episode one. I know there's been memes produced. Like it went nuts. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, terrible, <laughs> but, um, wardrobe but malfunction we have there. not, yeah, so we're not going to have any questions related to my shorts, but we have mountains of questions related to the content from episodes one or two. And what we're going to do is start hammering off some of those questions that you guys sent either in the, the live chat while those episodes were playing live in social media and the Helium 10 Facebook group, wherever it is. And then once we start getting through some of these, we'll some live questions right now. All right. Now there are some questions that we had before. I'm going to try and use this uh, cool technology and let's see if this actually works here to to show it. There we go. Oh, I can only see a little bit of it. All right. So this first question is when you do, this is from uh, Steve, I believe. When you do a search by uh, product or keyword, you get the results as of now. Can you do a search for a specific period like June to August? That's, that's a great question and something that, you know, we've, we've actually had some, some requests for at Helium 10. So Steve, uh, right now you, you can't do that, but at the same time, um, that is great to look up seasonal products. There's ways to go into black box and to kind of like say, Hey, show me what were the best sellers for this as of October, you know, 2019 or, uh, as of October, 2018, like, like maybe you're looking for some stuff that was selling really well during Halloween. So that is, that is something that you are able to do. But, uh, usually what we were demonstrating in episode, uh, I believe it was two, uh, we were kind of showing like, Hey, in the here and now, how do you do product research? Because that's, it takes a little bit of the guessing game. Like this is actually something selling right now. All right. And um, one thing to point out, I, I, I saw a lot of questions related to timing. You know, people were saying, Hey, I'm following along and the, and the data is different on my screen than it was in your screen. But remember we've been filming this for a little while and every month, some of that data changes. So as things change, as things become more saturated, as things get more reviews, drop in and out of those different search parameters, it's going to change. So, Black box is very up to date. It's very constant, um, but you can definitely go back to a time period and see what the hot products were. Like Bradley said, before Easter or before Christmas or those different types of things. All right, here's one uh, next question uh, that you could take, uh, Tim, and I'll, I'll read it off here. Uh, it's actually the second one on our list here. This is from Celeste. Uh, Celeste did this in the Facebook group, so thank you, Celeste. Uh, she said, "I'm interested in a product that is in a saturated niche, but there is no other product like it on Amazon." It sells very well off of Amazon and seems to be trending. Uh, most keywords are too hard to compete, but there are some keywords that I could go after that are lower search volume, about 200 to 500 searches a month. Should I shy away 
I, I want to hear that. I want to see that song. Should I stay or should I go? So, oh but she God. said, should I shy away from this or go for it? So the short answer is, and I know this sounds really, really awful. Uh, further episodes of Project X are going to explain this exactly. Like we're going to talk about why sometimes you should pay attention to keywords that have 500 or 1,000 searches. We're going to talk about things like keyword pyramids and all that. So the short answer, because we, we have short time today, is I would not necessarily run away from it. I understand that the keywords are saturated, but the product might not be saturated. And usually what happens if you have a unique product and you're like the first one to, to launch it, and it sounds like you're doing great. You're finding, hey, there's a lot of um, demand. There's a lot of traffic and a lot of interest in this thing off of Amazon. That's exactly what you need to be doing. That usually means that you can position yourself at a higher price on Amazon, right? So even if the keywords are competitive for PPC and cost per click is going to be high, you can usually bump that price up because you're the only one there. You don't have anybody else driving you down. Now, to continue the very short answer that we'll explain in other episodes, you can start launching this product based on the keywords with lower search volume that are less competitive and eventually start ranking on the more competitive keywords. So don't give up on this product yet. It's going to be like hours more content of Project X that will slowly start to answer that exact question for you and help you decide, hey, is this worth going after or not? But I can say already just looking at your comment, you're doing it right. You're finding products that are trending on Amazon and they are trending off of Amazon and aren't even on Amazon yet. This is exactly what we're talking about. Like big high five to you. That's exactly what we're talking about. And it sounds like you're doing some validation and some research, which is exactly the next step. So you're doing great. Don't stop. All right. We're going to have to pick up the pace here on, on these questions, Tim. I think we got, we got, we got so many here. So first of all, real quick, uh, I noticed uh, Cassandra in the comments is posting. We'd like to know where everybody's from. So save your questions a little bit, but right now in the chat, uh, should be on the right of your screen, depending on if you're on mobile or desktop, put what city and state you're from. I see we've got uh, Matthias here is from Germany. So welcome. Uh, we got Watchman 5 from Papua New Guinea. Awesome. Hasn't started selling yet. What's up? And uh, a quick shout out to a tax tense who says, Hey, you guys are cool. If you like to hear it, I know Tim likes to hear that a lot. <laughs> he has low self-esteem. So I never so. hear it. The people <laughs> that actually work with me and my friends all agree. I am not cool. So, uh, okay. Well, thank you for, we got one person in the world who thinks that we're cool. All right, let's get back to the, the questions here. The next question, um, this is from Christina. Uh, and this was in the helium 10 users, Facebook group. She said, question for Bradley and Tim. First of all, you guys are great. Hey, we, we got two people who think that we're cool. All right. all right. So helpful. Here's my question. I went to India to source products. Some of the products I found came up with a success, success score of two to three, but the search volume is very low, maybe 400. Why would this appear to be a good product if the search volumes are low? Uh, first of all, remember, success score does not mean good or bad. All right. Uh, uh, we'll talk about that in later episodes. The success score is just showing you different metrics there on the page. So um, like Tim said in the first one, wait until e actually episode, um, three is going to be really good. Uh, it's not even, it's barely ready. We just, uh, finished editing it and, uh, I just, it's fresh in my mind. So I just watched it right now. Uh, it's going out on Monday and that is going to show you some great validation techniques that, that Tim mainly shows in the I show as well. That will help you with that question, Christina, but, but save that for episode three. And then if you still have a question after episodes three and four, we're doing the validation We'll answer it on next next Friday's one. Um, here's a good one. Uh, maybe you can take it. Oh, this is from my my buddy Bua. Uh, Bua is also in the the Facebook group. Uh, she says, "How long do you track the competitors' keywords before creating your own title?" So usually, that doesn't necessarily. Um, have anything to do with a long time period, like it's fairly immediate. So when we're tracking a competitor's keywords, which what you mean is tracking relevant keywords to start targeting for our listing, we're just going to take the most relevant keywords that we're going to initially attack. It doesn't necessarily mean the highest search volume. If I'm selling a garlic press, I'm going to target and don't sell a garlic press, just an example. You know, I might be more focused on garlic press, although kitchen accessories has higher search volume. So so you don't need to go back in time and see which one of those keywords were more important, you know, over a, a spatial period. Like it just matters available right now. So I, I think who well, you're thinking, you're overthinking it a little bit, just use immediate information to figure out the most relevant keywords for your title. 
Excellent. So let's let's go real real quick to a couple of these lives again, guys. Try and save your live questions till about maybe 20, 30 minutes later. But I don't want to lose uh don't want to lose Spaceman's here. So Spaceman has a. I love it how on Facebook lives we see people's name and stuff, but then they're, everybody's YouTube names are all, <laughs> are a lot of these uh, stranger awesome. names. So we got Spaceman here. Um, he's from outer space, and he says hello. In regards to monthly keyword search volume, what range is a solid volume? Are we looking for above or particular number or range? So again, this is kind of something we're going to do episode three about, and this no. is something a little bit different than what we're teaching than others, right, Tim? Yeah, and it's frustrating because I would love to spend like an hour and answer that exact question for you, Spaceman. We don't have the time, but I promise by the end of next week, you will have gotten that. So it sounds funny saying that. I'm probably <laughs> Spaceman. We'll tell you all the answers, but it's true. By the end of next week, you will be going, oh my goodness, I've never thought about that. And we're going to draw diagrams for how that works. The short answer is we don't necessarily eliminate the lower keyword volume products, right? And mm -hmm. remember this, remember, th remember the word pyramid. When I explain this keyword pyramid, that's going to start to make a lot more sense to you. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right. All right. Let's give some quick shout outs here. Edin from Germany. What's up? We got Sonia from North Carolina. We've got Keith from Utah. How's it going? Iran, Iran from Seattle, Anton from Germany. Richard from Barcelona. We've got <laughs> Simply Naked Beauty from Clearwater, Florida. I, I actually know. Who I, that I hope is. that's a brand name. I know. I yeah. know who that is. Yeah. Oh, you know who that is. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that a is that a product on Amazon that we could? Um, no, nah, we should not. Nah, don't Google that, guys. If you're at work, uh, <laughs> Sean from right outside my office. What's going on, Sean? We got Sean, Michael from work. Vegas. Um. We got uh, Alar from Estonia. How's all right, guys? We got so many different countries here. I love it. I love it. All right, let's get back to the questions before we go go uh, to more shout outs here. And we've got one here from Ben. This was actually a question that he gave on our YouTube video. Uh, ben says, "When you find a product online, not Amazon, how can you buy them? We we used to go to Alibaba, where you have the manufacturers with quantities and prices. How can you order from Pinterest, for example, once you're interested in one product?" Go ahead on this one, Tim. All right. So basically the way this question is reading is, hey, it's so much easier to go to Alibaba. It's so much harder to like find this product on Pinterest. But that's great. If it were easy, everybody would do it. This is a small barrier to entry. You have to take a couple steps to actually find this product. But that's okay. We're going to do that. And in other episodes, we're going to actually show how we do that. But the short answer is if it's on Pinterest, somebody's producing it already. Right? So it may be that you and, – and I promise you one of the products that – um that, that we're going to show you in a, in a few episodes literally was not on Alibaba. We had to get really creative about how to find it and we found it on Pinterest. So you can source it. There's other places that you can go where you can actually find an idea and buy it like Etsy, right? Etsy is, is one of those places. And we talked about that where you can find these product news, but actually purchase it. So if it's on Pinterest, somebody's producing it already. It is a little more difficult than just going straight to Alibaba, but you want a little bit more difficult. There's less competition. Okay. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, switch. I, I, I guess I'll go back and forth because people aren't listening to me. Nobody ever, my kids don't listen to me. Nobody listens to me about waiting for other questions, but it's all right. It's all right, Peter. All right. Peter says, I'm doing a key, uh, doing keyword search gives us broad reach potential. Do you pay attention to this? This is a newer kind of thing that we're showing you in Helium 10. And basically what that is, is we're showing you if you were doing a PPC campaign, like how many, what are the possible keywords that could come up. So um, if I'm doing product research or keyword research, it's not like one of the most important things, absolutely not that, that I'm looking at. It's just good to know once I get to the PPC stage, which guys is is way longer in, in this uh, Project X, that's probably like episode eight or nine or 10 uh, even. Um, but we'll, we'll get a little bit more into how to set up your PPC campaigns. But quick answer to your question, no, that is not something that is super important for me to look at, but it is an interesting metric to uh, take a look at. All right, let's go back to our previous questions. We've got um, Jay. Here's another one I'll, I'll take. Jay uh, from YouTube says, I do research on Black Box and I find a product that says there's only one seller, but when I search for the product on Amazon, I find a bunch of sellers uh, on the same listing. All right, that is... Uh, that, that's the first part of his question. Um, the black box information you're seeing, you know, could have been taken yesterday, could have been taken four days ago. It's usually within the last 30 days. But remember, throughout the day, sellers can come on and off of a listing. I mean, throughout the, throughout the day, this actually happens. So that's why I always, and we'll show you in Project X, we always validate things on Amazon. You know, never rely uh, on just a, a set of tools to yep. get all your information. Always do validation like as a human being 
and look at it on Amazon to get the most up-to-date information. One of the products that we got most excited about, the validation tools told us it was terrible. And one of the reasons is the one seller of this product was consistently stocking out. So it was never mm -hmm. consistent sales. So we're going to show you how to look at a lot of different variables to make those decisions. All right. Let's see here. Um, we got another, we'll go to another one of the Facebook questions that we got this week. And guys, if you're wondering, what do I mean when I say Facebook group? Uh, this is a Helium 10 users Facebook group where we will put posts about Project X there and you guys can reply and put some questions up there. This one is from Andy Aykroyd. Uh, Dan's son. No, I don't know. If this, uh, it says, hey, Bradley, uh, you went through. So <laughs> I just aged myself with that reference, I guess. <laughs> you, hey, Bradley, you went through Cerebro in episode one. When you use, he, he must be talking about uh, episode two. Um, yeah. When you use Cerebro or, in fact, any of the keyword tools, is there a way to get the conversion rate of each keyword? Um, no. So anybody who you hear that says that, you is lying all right there is uh not a way to to legally you know unless you're hacking amazon or or getting some secret reports out where you know the conversion rate now you can see in something on on amazon called brand analytics what is the conversion share meaning uh, on a certain keyword of the people who purchase a pro uh, a product after searching for that um who who is the ones who are selling the most or who are selling the most but you it's kind of hard because you're missing a variable, which you don't know how many total conversions are, which I think is what you're you're asking for. So beware of anybody that can tell you that that you can do that because the bottom line is you can't. Yep. All right, let's go back. Uh, let me just see before we get too behind on the, some of the live ones. All right, here here's one that you can uh, um, that we can answer from Annette. I'm using Black Box. I've seen a product I'm interested in, but I've noticed it's sold by brand names with many sellers having the buy box. Is it safe to private label the product? Go ahead, Tim. Um, I'm immediately scared away a little bit because you're saying it's sold by brand names with many sellers having the buy box. Now, what you're talking about is a listing. You're not talking about a product, right? So when, when someone says, oh, there's a lot of sellers in the buy box, I feel like they're specifically talking about a listing. Now, if brand name is selling a product it doesn't mean that you can't also sell a similar product, right? So just because there's a lot of sellers in one listing, don't immediately dismiss the keyword of the product opportunity. If it's an established listing by a big brand with big brand name and a lot of sellers, I would definitely try to differentiate because it's going to be hard to compete with them. But what we're talking about is keywords. We're not validating the products themselves. We're not validating how many sellers are in a buy box. We're just validating keywords at this point. So don't look too deeply into that. And when you start to understand the principles that we're teaching this, you'll start to realize that some of those metrics that scared us off earlier maybe don't matter quite as much. All right. Uh, we got another question I'll take. This is from Richard. This is live uh, from today. Richard says, in the EU... Uh, zone. Germany is the biggest Amazon market. Now, when I follow your tips on product research and copy the filters you apply in the .com, I barely have enough products or keywords left. Tips. First of all, one thing I believe that we mentioned in the episode is do not follow the exact same things that we're doing. We just showed you a an example, but you can just imagine if everybody's using the same filters that we are, you guys are all going to have the same stuff. There are a million different filters. You guys should definitely always vary it to, to what you guys want. That being said, whatever you do in the U.S., you kind of have to take down a notch for the German markets and the European markets because they're just not as big. For example, if I'm doing black box for keywords in the US, maybe I wanted to search for keywords that have five to 10,000 searches. Uh, and, and that's not that high relative. I mean, there's thousands of keywords that have those that yeah. many searches in US. In Germany, those might be some of the top keywords right there. So you might want to go lower. So uh, just think about the market. It's not, it's not an exact science, but one, one report I saw was that, um, I think, uh, something like 80% of sales uh, overall on Amazon are on USA. And then number two, second place is Germany at 12%. And then I think number three and four are UK and Japan, which go back and forth like 6% or so. But, but just keep that in mind that you can't use the same filters in the different marketplaces. All right, we got Austin, Texas in the house. What's up? Greetings from Russia. I think we've got about 10 countries so far that, we, that we've given shout outs. Um, here we go. Uh, I don't know if you have experience with this or not, uh, Tim. This is from Michael. How long should you wait from the time you launch in a market to the time that you expand into a new country? That's really hard to say. There's not an exact answer. It depends on where you're jumping from. Jumping from the US to Canada 
is not that difficult. Jumping from the US to Japan is much more difficult. But that same product that may not work in Japan or that may not work in Canada may work great in Japan. Um, it's a little bit easier to jump to the UK and, you know, use their like pan-European distribution, you know, network for small sales. But it's a lot more difficult to actually start inventorying, stocking and fulfilling and VATing in Spain, right? So there's not really a short answer to that because every scenario, every situation, every product and every market is going to be different. So uh, I don't want to say that you have to, you know, trial and error it, but do research on each specific market based on your specific product, start slow, test it, and then um, ignore anybody that just gives blanket statements is gospel truth because there are no blanket truths to that to that question. Okay, thank you for that, and thank you for that question. Uh, we got one. It's not really a question, but kind of a statement. This was uh, from the YouTube live chat or YouTube comments on episode two. Uh, our pawn says, the most interesting thing for me was the discovery of Pinterest as a research tool. It was hunch revalidated. However, the best part is the degree of ease with which you walk us through it. So, uh, our pawn, thank you very much. And that reminds you, what else did you guys, you know, you guys can mention it live here. What else did you uh, like most about episode two? I mean, episode one, we we're just kind of setting it up. But but in episode two, we were getting down and dirty into that product research. So, what did you guys like about, about episode two um, that you could share with us like our pawn did here? All right, we've got another question here uh, from, uh, this is from the YouTube live chat. I think this was on episode two. This was from Didi. Didi says, when you say validate, do you mean the keywords or the product itself? Okay, so I think how we had said, hey, in the next episode, episode three, we're going to validate. So when we said that, Tim, what were we talking about? We were talking about validating uh, the keywords as being relevant. And we're also going to talk about validating them as a potentially good product opportunity based on that keyword. So right now we're just validating keywords, which will turn into product validation later. Okay. And another question from YouTube from episode one. Now uh, you can take this one as well, Tim. Uh, Chris says for, or for the AMAs, he said, can I kindly ask, I, look at the, I like the UK people. They have such nice, uh, what do you call it? Uh, manners, right? Can I kindly yeah. ask you something? Very I nice. They're all cursing you for that yeah. horrible <laughs> English accent. Just Sean now. out here is is going to like hit me on the top of my head. He's actually from the UK. Yeah. That was a bad accent. Anyways, horrible. can I kindly ask you sometimes to refer to the UK market as well? Yeah. Okay, enough of that. Through the technique, obvious, or though the technique obviously can be similar, I'm pretty sure due to massive differences in market size would be appropriate to have some comparisons. We're not going to go too much into like the European markets. However, a lot of the stuff that we're going over as a rule of thumb, Tim, um, it can pretty much be be translated. The, te the techniques are similar as far as the research, the validation, right? Would you say? Yeah, and I'm gonna even drop something even deeper. The techniques work on other platforms too. So a lot of these techniques work on Rakuten, they work on, um, not really like Shopify because it's not a marketplace, but a lot of these these larger marketplaces that operate in a similar way. So, you know, we might not get as excited about a product in the UK as we would in the US because, you know, lowish search volume here could still net, you know, 500 or 600 sales a month where that same product in the UK would only be three or four sales a month, right? But to balance that, there's less competition in the UK. So even though there's less sales volume, there's a lot less competition. So there is like a yin and yang, a balance there that you need to pay attention to. So where you might not get excited about something in the US, maybe we could get excited about in the UK because it's wide open blue ocean. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lisa from the FBA High Rollers group, that's another one of our, our Facebook groups, the FBA High Rollers, uh, says, I don't understand the whole hijacking thing. How does one hijack your product when they don't personally have your product? How can you see that they're doing that? And I take it from all the information I've learned that there's nothing you can do about it until your brand registry and trademark, correct? So uh, Lisa, we're going to talk about that in a little bit later episodes, like uh, some, some ways that you can kind of like protect yourself uh, from things like that. But stay tuned for, for future episodes. That's a great and, question, though. And I will say that it is incorrect to say that there's nothing you can do without brand registry. Um, to be honest with you, brand registry isn't brand gating. It, it gives you less protection than a lot of people think. You know, you still have to be proactive. It's not like self-governing. And when it comes to hijacking, you don't have to have, have brand registry to go through a process to prove to Amazon that this is not an authentic product. So you do actually have more protection than you think you do. And we can talk about that later. Absolutely. All right. Um, Jonathan says, what about the questions from Facebook? Yeah, Jonathan, we're, we're, hit, we're hitting some of those right now. Uh, Spaceman says, greetings from space. Thank you for answering. Uh, Michael says, hey, I was asleep. Will there be any recording? 
I was, uh, he goes, sorry, I meant it's late, so I got to go to sleep. All right, so Michael is, is calling from a post. I was like, how is he typing when he's asleep? <laughs> Michael's yeah, calling, I'm or asleep, Michal man. is calling from Poland. So, yeah, go ahead. Go go to sleep. Uh, you'll be able to come back to this exact page. Just just You'll see it right here on the YouTube channel tomorrow, and you can watch the, the whole thing uh, recorded. Uh, Miguel says, uh, what is Project X? How is it different from the freedom ticket inside Helium 10? So, Miguel, make sure to watch episodes one and two where we kind of go over it. It's not just different from freedom ticket. It's different from anything else that, that's out there. It's something new, and, and it's a, like an A to Z really showing you the step-by-step -step on the process. You know, freedom ticket has a lot of similar modules in it, but that's like over 40 hours of content. However, it's using different strategies. We're, we're going to talk about some strategies that are in freedom ticket, I mean, Tim even has done a, an episode or an episode, a module for Freedom Ticket. But a lot of the stuff that we're going to be showing you are things that, I don't know, at least for me, I have not seen teached or teached. Taught. Yeah, I need to teach myself some English. I've not seen taught uh, out there. Right, Tim? And, and I will say this. Freedom Ticket and Project X work together. All right. Um you know, Freedom Ticket does everything like walks you through how to set up your Amazon account and all this. Like a lot of the stuff that we're not covering in Project X, especially if you're a brand new beginner, is covered in Freedom Ticket, right? There yeah. are even things like we're going to talk about some logistics. Like you're going to see some logistics in Project X that we're going to not go too deep in. And we're actually going to reference it and say, hey, if you want to get deeper into this specific action, look at Freedom Ticket. So they work together. They're very complementary, but they're also uh, very different in the sense that one is more tactical and one is more strategic. Yep, absolutely. We've got uh, Emily from Morocco, another country in the house. Awesome. We got I'm, we, we got almost all the continents uh, except, uh, except um, Antarctica represented I here. I haven't seen South America yet. I haven't seen South America. All right. all right. Anybody from South America on the show? I guarantee there's somebody listening from South America right now. I'm going to guess Brazil. I'm going Brazilian. Yeah, Brazil is probably going to be the one. Now, here we got somebody squeaks U of A. I'm assuming maybe somebody from Arizona or some University of Arizona. Anyways, most wholesale listings like Annette. Who's Annette? Is that your alter ego, Tim? <laughs> Annette was referencing are some of the worst optimized listings on Amazon. Might be U of A might be referring to to something else, but um, but it's a good question either way. Uh, I, I like this question here. Do you think brand recognition with a bad listing will trump a fully optimized listing? It depends. All right. It depends if it's if it if there's a brand that somebody is just absolutely going to going to buy, like Nike, yeah, they or Yeezy shoes, they could care less if the listing has all a bunch of images or if it has great bullet points or makes an emotional connection. They're looking for the Yeezys, all right, as opposed to like some no name seller who has an amazing shoe, amazing shoe, amazing listing, but. Like they don't care about, you know, they're not going to buy it instead of the Yeezys if they were looking for the Yeezys. Tim, go ahead. But most of the products on Amazon are not these massively brand heavy products. And also you're talking about a head to head comparison. Okay. You're talking about a head to head comparison. So what if I've got an OtterBox case on my phone? Okay. OtterBox is a recognized name. It's a big brand. By the way, Tim, we all, we're all going to see that. And I, I'm reviewing episode three. You've got the, your phone just sitting very awkwardly in the middle of the desk. I'm like, right. come on, Tim. <laughs> all right. So OtterBox, if I'm looking for an OtterBox phone case and I type that in, Amazon's going to pop up potentially a horrible listing of an OtterBox and then another rubber, rugged, waterproof phone case that might have a better listing, but I'm going to buy the OtterBox. But if I go in and search, um, Android rugged waterproof phone case. And because OtterBox's listing is so poorly optimized that it doesn't even show up on that page, then you've got the advantage. So there's kind of a balance. Just, just remember that all things are not equal. So if their listing pops up, the brand recognition may trump a horrible listing. But if their listing is terrible, they might not even show up on a search term result. And that gives you an opportunity to, uh, to beat them out. All right, excellent. Let's keep going with the questions. You guys are bringing the fire today. I love it. Um, uh, the it looks like some of these were in response to when we asked what people liked about the the first couple episodes. Uh, Michael says, uh, "My wife and I like the online online and out of Amazon product areas. Good. I I, th I thought that a lot of people would like that." Um, Squeaks thinks that he or she has found one of the the listings from episode two. I mean, a lot of these are, are yeah. The, I mean, that, that those are live products on Amazon. Some of those. Uh, I just saw today the uh, what was what was the first one that we we found the the party favors the yeah the seeds yeah the seeds like that that's that that that's still on Amazon absolutely 
Uh, Christina liked, I love that the burrito blanket came up as a product. Did you know it comes in the pizza too? <laughs> oh, LOL made me laugh. I actually know the person that launched the first pizza one. Wow. Yeah. Cool. How cool is that? All right. Um, Richard liked the offline product research. Cool. Okay. Here's a question from Michael. Got a lot of different Michaels on, on, on the line today. Uh, I use in Cerebra after finding the relevant keywords for my product, what words do I need to put in broad phase and exact? All right, Michael, you're, you're trying to skip ahead again. Uh, we're going to definitely get into that. Uh, Michael in later episodes. Absolutely. And we're not just ignoring your answer. That is mm -hmm. such a long answer. We can't yeah. cover it right now. There's like, we're going to show you like three different types of PPC to do. And the answer is going to change for every type of PPC campaign we're running. It's going to get really intense, like camping. <laughs> here's a good, here's a good one for you. Here, here, here from Tim, for, uh, Tim, uh, for Tim from Tom. Let's try saying that five times fast. Hey guys, greetings from the UK. Notice I'm not doing the accent this time. Thank uh, you. I found one keyword in my niche that has low competition. Many surrounding keywords are pretty competitive. Any advice if this is a good or bad product to go for? It's really hard to answer that one. That's like throwing up a generic question like saying, which bear is best? Now, I know that Dwight Schrute has an answer to that, but I don't. Um, and Tom, I'm not trying to be facetious. Man, I'd have to know a lot more information about that. Like I'd have to see exactly what the keyword was, what listings you're talking about, because the answer could go multiple different ways. It could be a good product. It could be a bad product. But we are going to teach you in this case study on how to test that. So just sit tight. You've got a few more episodes to go. We're going to blow your mind. We're going to help you answer that without ha having to actually buy a ton of inventory. and. Uh, hope for the best all right we got another continent represented here australia uh margaret our buddy here says our favorite two guru we're not gurus don't call us gurus not the g word we're not g men Margaret, right. how dare you yeah come on margaret you know we don't like that word i thought <laughs> i thought you were lovely lovely dang it i got it wrong in australia i think they say lovely lovely i don't know all right I'll take your word for that. All right, we got. Let's go back to the the Facebook questions. This is from the, our FBA High Rollers group. Um, this is from Jack Hurdle says, "How does a new seller compete with uh, a lot of Amazon employees who are releasing information on the algorithm and changing listings, one star bombing your listing, buying items and then canceling, zombie accounts, et cetera, et cetera?" All right, Jack. Um, like the other one who had talked about the hijacking, we're gonna get into that later, but. A lot of the products that we were searching for, those parameters in episode two, almost by definition, will not be, uh, will not be the kind of products that people are going to be doing that kind of stuff to. Plus, actually, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. One of in the validation episode in episode three, one of those five could be one. What had some red flags that kind of told us, hey. This could be something that we could have to experience some of these things that you mentioned. And so we probably should stay away from it. So stay tuned for that episode. Yeah. And, and, and I'll, I'll basically say the same then rephrase it. We do not want to sell products that are so massively competitive that they're being targeted by these black hat sellers, right? We don't want that garbage. We like to fly under the radar a little bit, higher profit margin, less competition, and millions of product opportunities. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit further on, but the type of products that we're selecting, we generally aren't having these problems with the hijacking and the malicious and the, the super competitive stuff just because of the nature of the product that we're selling. Yep, absolutely. All right, let's keep going with these questions from, let's go back to YouTube. This is from episode one. Uh, PB, peanut butter says, North Carolina here, not yet selling, but... <laughs> I don't know. It's hard guys, guys. Okay. Here, here's the thing. When you guys are going to chat with us on YouTube, um, go into your Google account and put your name there. It's going to help me. So I don't do these corny jokes, but you know, you know, have these weird you know I made a bad face as soon as you said peanut butter. I almost said it's peanut butter, jelly time. Peanut butter, jelly time. <laughs> oh man. Tim, Tim, Tim is, uh, it's definitely Friday for Tim. You know, we're live now. <laughs> All right, uh, PB says, North Carolina here, not yet selling, but I'm going on week four of the Freedom Ticket. Super excited to start selling. I've seen some posts in the user group about Black Hat reviews killing your listing. Will you be covering how to avoid and fight those? We're going to be talking, again, It's a lot of these questions are very similar. It's going to be kind of, we're going to have an episode where, where we're talking about uh, about these things. But again, 
the the research techniques that we used in episode two were kind of designed to help us to find categories that hopefully this kind of thing wouldn't happen. I mean, Kevin King has talked about it in Freedom Ticket, how how much has he sold, uh, you know, eight figures worth of Amazon products over the last few years. And he has never had one hijacker, never had one black hat person go after him because of the products that he is choosing. All right. So definitely uh, stay tuned for episode three, where we, we go a little bit more into the validation and show you how to avoid that. Is that is that Cassandra running the Helium 10 comments? I think uh, I think Cassandra is there. She's not here at the office, but uh, it's got to be. Why? I, I didn't see. She said Tim is a man of many talents. Tim is a ta man of many talents. All right. Yeah. Cassandra, you gave her her first podcast opportunity, right? That was her. And yep. I had her on because of you. I was like, well, Tim has Cassandra. That's not even fair. Like he beat me. She was my coworker, and he has her on his podcast before me. My goodness. So we had her. So guys, check out Cassandra. If you want to get to know Cassandra, who is behind the Helium 10 username right there, make sure to uh, check out. I believe it's like episode 101 or 102 or something like that. Uh, and then also uh, Tim's podcast, the Private Label Legion. Uh, she's on there as well. All right. Uh, Didi. Didi was asking a lot of questions. That day. This is episode one. Uh, how do you measure success in this case study? Do you validate the product? Um, success is about creating financial independence, whether we start small or not. Uh, I disagree with you, Didi. Uh, I think I can speak for most of us. No, you can't. Let's not speak for everybody here. All right. That, that was the one thing that we were, Didi, we were trying to really teach in episode one that it's not a one size fit all uh, of what success is. It's not up to us to tell you guys what success is or another YouTube guru to tell you that success is having a Lamborghini or having financial independence. It's not always about that, right, Tim? Yeah. And DD, I'm not disagreeing with you necessarily because, you know, financial success is amazing. You know, I was working, uh, you know, I was a firefighter paramedic and it was, you know, it's a stressful job, but most importantly, I was on shift every third day, you know, every third night I was there and I had small kids and it was tough and getting into Amazon allowed me to walk away from that. That is a sense of freedom, but I can't, I have countless, you know, like coaching students that are happy with one or two listings that just make their mortgage payment. Another thousand dollars, another 1500, another $800. That's easy. It's not a ton of work. It's just a little extra side cash form. It's your vacation fund. Now that's not giving them financial independence. They still are working their nine to five and you know, they still have to come up with other money, but just that little extra bit helps. There are some people that are just in this for the hobby. I know people I know a guy right now that is filthy rich sitting in Singapore and he has like 10 listings on Amazon for the fun of it. So for him, the success is not making money. It's going around to these Amazon conferences and being involved in the networking and being part of the community and just seeing what he can launch. So do not let one person or one thing define anybody's level of success because you'll just get discouraged because we all can't mm -hmm. meet somebody else's standard, right? So the whole purpose of defining, you know, what works on, on Project X, for us, the success is showing you that there are a lot of products, there are a lot of methods that work and giving you a kind of a, a yellow brick road on how to do that, right? But it doesn't mean that everybody's going to sell a million dollars, right? Yeah. All right, sorry, yeah, I got up on the box. All right, no worries. Let's go back to some of the live comments. we got some other countries who... Uh, We'll give some shout outs to Nicaragua in the house. What's up? Oh, and Squeaks U of A is not Arizona. It's Alabama. My bad. Whoa. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So go Auburn. Oh, no, no. Uh, she's she's going to shoot me uh, through the career. <laughs> we got Tahiti in the house. We've got Afghanistan in the house. I love it. Awesome. Awesome. Juan from Colombia. All right. So not Brazil. We got Colombia in the house. All right. Uh, Sonia says, what are some uh, Helium 10 tools that show my top 10 competitors? How do I do this uh, type of search? Well, in Cerebro, if you have an existing list, and you can put your ace in there and then do get competitors. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're the top competitors. The best way to find the top competitors is, is not necessarily in a tool, all right? And hey, I work for Helium 10, I'm telling you that. But it just makes me upset when, when I see gurus and, and different people teaching people that you just click buttons and these that's what's going to give you the solutions no it takes a human being to find your top competitors why because you could have uh like for the uh, an example i've given before i might even give this in project x is like an accordion you know the, there's kids accordions that are 20 dollars, and there's professional accordions for like mariachi bands that are 500 and they're on the same page they're not competing with each other all right they're not competitors just because they're accordions you know a, 
tools won't be able to tell you that. They'll just tell you who all is on the first page, right? Which is it, which is important in itself. But you need to go out and physically see what are is a potential buyer for product A similar to product B, the potential buyer for product B. If so, A and B are competitors. So that's my advice to you on what you need to do for there. Um, let's see. Uh, PW says just finished Freedom Ticket and it was awesome. Shout out to the team behind it. Is there any new modules coming on it soon? Yes, there is. Uh, we got Tim's coming up soon and we're constantly like week by week. We're adding actually more, more modules to that. Uh, Squeaks U of A says, Tim, we need to get together. I'll buy you some lunch or, or, or a beer. All right, there we go. Don't, don't threaten Tim with a good time. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Ooh, I like this one here. Man, guys, these questions, I think I'm losing some of the questions. So, uh, Cassandra, if you, if you notice, uh, guys, it, you can see the questions I'm answering right now. Um, I, my, you guys are an asking so many that my screen can't take it all and I'm losing some, like I can't even go back. So if you notice that your question didn't get answered, I'm not ignoring you. It just got taken off my feed right here. So please ask it again. So we got here. Annette says episode two gave me a reality check using, uh, black box. I had seen the burrito blanket, but didn't dig deeper since it looked out of place. The egg case and, and burrito blanket gave me a reality check. All right. Thank you for the comments. Hey, do you see rock jabs 52 comment? No, not yet. All right. It's going to uh, be, I'll look for it. Let me see rock. Jab. Oh, there it is. Rock jab 62 about the burrito blankets. Yep. I found it. Uh, I am surprised you pick burrito blankets. That product is so oversaturated. Ooh. A little uh, preview for coming attractions right there. All right, we'll 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 see. It. Is it oversaturated or not? Uh, when we were searching on it, it definitely was not oversaturated. But when we dive into it, there might be some different stories there. Make sure to stay tuned to episode three. TLC, don't go chasing waterfalls. Uh, that's not even their best song. The best song is oh. No Scrubs. Okay, No Scrubs. We got No Scrubs here. We're the best. TLC says. <laughs> Thanks for the info. Uh, we got Canada in the house. What's up? Cassandra Wait, how do you say that name. Hmm? Welcome. <laughs> no, go back to the Canada guy. <laughs> Hello from Banff. Banff. Banff, Canada. All right. Like, I feel like that's a word I would say when I sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't even know how to. All right. <laughs> uh, Christina says, "I also really like that there are three per ep week, so we don't have to wait." Thank you so much. Man, I, why isn't it letting me scroll up? I know I'm missing questions, guys. I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. Here's a good one. Melissa Burrup. Sorry, I just got here. Is anyone asking about BSR? A lot of people talk. Uh, make sure that you check the BSR. Is that something that needs to be a factor? Pick me. Pick Him. me. Pick me. Tim, Tim, Tim. We don't give a flying fart about BSR generally. Like BSR uh, unless, unless it means Bradley Sutton rules. <laughs> sorry, guys. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was standing for the burrito saturation rank. <laughs> no. And, oh and, my goodness. Well, listen, let me back up and say this. There are a lot of applications where BSR matters. Okay. If you're selling wholesale, if you're selling arbitrage, like those are important metrics for you. But for us, BSR doesn't take into account relevancy and it also doesn't take into account niche, very direct searched products. Right. I don't, I don't even know if we've mentioned the term BSR at all in any of the episodes that we filmed to this point. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we have. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think so. And, yeah, I, and I, right. I, I'm, I'm with him. I, I, I don't look at it almost at all. No. All right. Cause we, we got sales estimation, you know, that that's, what's more important at a BSR, like at a moment in time, you know? All right. Um, man, uh, guys, I hate to see it cause it's going to hurt the YouTube algorithm here. Cassandra's going to get mad at me, but. Can we can we pause the comments for like three minutes, guys? All right, because every time, every time you guys put a comment, that means I I just lost somebody else's comment because you guys are going faster. And I want to be able to do these. I want to pause and go back to the the older questions here. So, guys, pause the comments right now, Cassandra. I'm sorry for messing up the YouTube algorithm, but we're getting inundated. There's there's been about 400 messages, literally 400 messages so far. All right, let me go back to the questions from YouTube. Let me let me skip around because we're not going to get to all these. Here, let's go to one from episode two from the Helium 10 users group from Palavi. Palavi says, if you find six to seven keywords with above a thousand search volume a month and average reviews of less than 100 and competing products less than 
six thousand each. Oh my goodness, man! Palabi is going deep. Uh, average revenue three thousand each. Does it sound like a good niche, even if no product appears in black box search? All right, six to seven keywords with above. So I mean, first of all, I'd have to ask, like, are you talking? Are you sure that all six of those keywords are all for the same product? You know, I mean, you could find six or seven keywords with a thousand search volume all over the place, but if they don't apply to the same product, then it doesn't really matter. So I'm assuming you found, you know, using using Cerebro that these were keywords that one of your or a potential competitor is getting sales from. What do you think? Do, do you see that question there in the Google sheet, um, Tim? I line don't. 38. I'm actually looking at other questions, so I don't even know what question. Yeah, look up line 38. See if you can make a little bit more sense out of it than 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 me. Holy crap! You see how many lines of questions we have? On six, <laughs> seven above we got tons. You guys are awesome. We might have to. We're probably gonna Cassandra. Uh, let 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 Sean know because I can't see your messages, Cassandra. But let Sean know if it's if it's okay to go beyond one hour because I think we we need a little bit more time. Yeah, we're gonna have to go beyond one hour. Uh, the answer to question on line number 38 is there's not enough information there. Like it's a lot of data, but it's it, there's nothing on there about relevance and there's nothing on there specifically about, um, you know, price points and stuff like that. So it looks like there's a lot of research in that question, but it's still not enough for me to like look at it and definitively give an opinion. Okay. Yep. I agree. We haven't, we haven't even done a screen share yet today. So like somebody had, nobody has asked us a question. We can actually go live and, and take a look at somebody's product or something like that. You realize this is going to be like a four hour AMA, right? Uh, I, I got meetings today. I can't stay here for, <laughs> we'll make it, we'll make it as long as it takes guys. All right. Let's skip around here. Um, this is from the helium 10 users group. And it says it's about episode two from Ann Chow Ann says product research question, uh, x-ray sews an ASIN with about 900 monthly sales, 300 reviews, and um, 700 review velocity. All right, you might be looking at it wrong because it can't have 700 review velocity. Uh, it might be 70. I think it might be a typo. Uh, most of page one sellers, uh, this is Ann talking, most of the page one sellers for this product have over 20% review rate, review velocity divided by sales, which is bad, but not sure I can trust the review velocity numbers. All right, well, Here's another thing. Uh, people have been talking about manipulation and black hat technique techniques. And somebody just instant messaged me yesterday, say, Hey, here's a person that came up with 300 reviews in one night. You know, like if I report them to Amazon, will, will they do something about it? And the answer is, you know, it, it could happen. It could, it could happen. You, the, the Amazon does take these kind of things seriously. Uh, and, uh, I've heard that if it's above like 15, 20%, uh, review velocity compared to your sales that Amazon kind of like has some internal red flags. That's like, wait, we need to take a look at this. And 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 a lot of those bad players, they'll get their reviews taken away eventually. All right. So I definitely don't suggest doing that. But if you ever see weird things like that, where all of a sudden like 700 reviews or 70 reviews show up overnight, yes, it does happen. Yes, it's illegal activity made by sellers. And yes, there's probably a good chance that they'll get caught and be punished for it. Yep. All right. Cassandra says we can keep going, Tim. So. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let's keep going here. Uh, another. Oh, Jonathan. Oh my good. <laughs> no wonder Jonathan, Jonathan, you were, you were greedy. Remember Jonathan of uh, about 15 minutes ago was saying, Hey, are you going to get to the Facebook questions? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to it. I'm looking here on the Google. I take a, take a look uh, at line 31, Tim. He's got line 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 on our list. He was asking rapid fire questions here. So I'm not sure if we can get to all your questions, Jonathan, but let's, let let's, let's take uh let's take one here. Um, where did the serious sellers podcast go on Spotify? Yes, that right now is missing from Spotify. So guys, if you are uh, wondering, where is that podcast I was talking about that Cassandra's on uh serious sellers podcast right now, you can listen on iTunes, Stitcher, Google podcast, uh, tune in a bunch of other places, but right now Spotify is, is not working. So there's question one for Jonathan. She did. Uh, what did you say? I said she did. She did. Okay. Um, when you change, okay, Basically, here we go. The short version is when you make changes to your bullet points, title, search terms, yeah. et cetera, it obviously disrupts your ranking because it's disrupting your indexing. How long does that take to remedy itself? There is no short answer because it depends on what category you are. It depends on what season you're in. Like if you're in the middle of Q4, there are so many changes that it's going to take a long time for those things to start taking effect. Also, different attributes of your listings will index at a different rate. So like I've seen before, that looks like the title will take 
changes like like absorb those changes faster then maybe you're back into your bullet points normally though i use um helium 10's index checker to make sure that i'm indexed right it usually takes between 24 hours or a little less you know if, if after 24 hours i haven't started indexing for those keywords that i may have inserted then i might open up a case and ask what's up i know when we were doing this case study bradley there's times when like we would create a brand new listing and like 12 minutes later, we check it with keyword indexer and they've all indexed, right? So it just varies, but generally less than 24 hours to make those changes. All right. For the rest of your questions, Jonathan, um, they, they actually didn't, don't have anything to do with Project X, the episode. So th those are questions for, for our future episodes. So guys, the questions that we're asking today is specifically or are trying to answer is specifically about episodes one and two. So Jonathan, maybe keep those questions. And if you see an episode about that, we'll, we'll be happy to 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 answer those all right let's keep going i've you guys weren't listening to me about no more comments and i've lost about 75 more questions so you'll have to put it later let's go back to live questions here uh like i see cassandra says great question style points i don't see style points question here anymore it's gone so st sorry style points give us your question again uh we've got kearney says Let's see. Hey guys, when I'm on black box, I see a lot of the products show they're making sales, but have no ratings. What's your advice on that? If these are still good products to sell, if they have no ratings. So if they have no reviews, one of two things happen. They're either brand new, right? They're like, and they're just starting to sell, but they're already making, you know, big sales. Maybe they're doing a big launch. That's why they showed up in black box or they got their reviews taken away because of what we were talking about earlier, where they might have been doing review manipulation. That's why they have no reviews, but I love seeing products with zero or low reviews that are selling. Don't you, Tim? Yeah, I and, and you guys are going to see that. Like something that's selling well, something that's hot and has no reviews, it means that the barriers to entry for us getting in on that potential keyword slash product slash niche is going to be easier. Love it. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, are you going to spend a lot of money on PPC initially to promote your product? We'll, we'll get into that in a, in a, in a later episode. And I will say the answer to that may absolutely shock you. All right. L look at this. Uh, he or she doesn't even want to say what the other T, like the other one. Like we can't even say Auburn. How did, uh, how, did, uh, how did Squeaks not hear me yell in War Eagle, man? Oh. The way I see it is I have all of my teeth. I have to be an Auburn fan. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's rough. Oh, right? no, no. Tim, you're making enemies here. We're supposed to be making friends. I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. That was brutal. <laughs> Squeaks, I'm sorry. It's all in fun. All um, right. <laughs> let's keep going here. Um, let's see. We got Melissa in the house. Let's see. Check out, check out Michael Folk's comment there. About his wife? Yep. Okay. My wife is an ER nurse, and I'm a paramedic, and being able to walk away from the job we see is our definition of success. I love it. Love so, it. So Michael, my wife is a nurse and I was a medic and I was able to walk away. And right now she could walk away if she wanted to. And I'm not particularly smart. I'm just a little bit crazy and started figuring some of this stuff out. So it is absolutely possible. Yep. Yep. All right, guys, remember, try and keep the questions to, uh, to what we've been talking about in project X so far. There's some that I actually am skipping over because I, I want to get to really the rele the, the relevant questions here. Um, so yeah, Dan, like that one, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit in a later episode about, uh, about coupon mistakes and things like that. Um, here's something that was, uh, uh, that's about product research, which, which was episode two from Tom. How important is Google search volume when targeting products and keywords on Amazon is having easy keywords to rank on Google. Just a bonus. I like that. Um, a lot of what we talk about is off Amazon and you will see us in future episodes using indicators away from Amazon to detect potential search volume coming to Amazon. I think Amazon is slow. I can prove that Amazon is slow, right? People are searching for products and products are trending way ahead of sometimes even much as 18 months ahead of Amazon on places like Google and other search engines like Pinterest, right? So if something's trending up in Google and you can use Google trends, in fact, you can use Trendster in uh, Helium 10, which has a graph basically of the Google Analytics built in for you. Like I know it doesn't get talked about much, but it's in there. That's always a good sign. If it's blowing up on Google, it will probably soon start seeing increased traffic to Amazon. Thank you. Thank you. Squeak says, Tim, no. <laughs> All right. We got Kenya in the house. We've got Germany in the house, Switzerland. Uh, Ecom Dojo says, I'm just here for the Zumba. <laughs> 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 all right um 
A uh, good question here from Richard. The revenue numbers on the product listings are those of the last calendar month. So if you're talking about X-ray, if you run X-ray on a page and it says, you know, sales, that's the estimated amount of sales in the last 30 days. Great question, Richard. Very relevant. Um, okay. So Richard says, if show, if show, yeah, show, no. If so, then those numbers do not display what you can expect in slower months if you perform the research in January with the financial numbers of the December holiday season. Well, it's showing you the, the trailing 30 days, all right? But remember, you can go back in history, right? Um, expect. Okay, you know what? Well, let, let, let's do that. Let, we, I haven't been able to, to share my screen today, so let's see if this is going to work. Here, hold on. Let's go put this here. And All right, so let's look at Amazon. Give me a product to search for, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> remember that product that you talked about at kevin king's thing no we can't we can't <laughs> we can't do that one <laughs> let's do um let's do uh armrest shelf for couch what armrest armrest shelf for couch you're did, welcome did I spell it right yep you're welcome you didn't even know this product existed uh, I, I need something like this yeah That's right cool. all right so if you want to go here and um, let's go to the Amazon's choice one. All right. So like if you were looking at uh, at this like in um, in in December or in January, and you're worried like, hey, everybody was maybe buying this product. Let me hide this question here. It's taking up the screen. Everybody was maybe buying this product in for a, a, a gift. Well, what you could do is you can run X-ray on it. OK, and then you, what uh, who is it? Richard was talking about was like, hey, is this the kind of like the. The, the sales for the last 30 days, but what, what if it's the numbers are inflated? Well, you can click here on sales, all right? And then just go back, like you can see, hey, okay, for the last you know couple of months, they've been selling about 20 units a day, but then you can go back 90 days and see where it's at. Yes, you can definitely see that there is a peak over here in, in Christmas time, or you can go back you know even one year and you can see that throughout the year, it's actually se selling fairly steady between like five and 15 products a day. So if you're worried that a product, the numbers that you're seeing are kind of warped because of Christmas or some other holiday, well, just hit this in X-ray and then you guys will be able to see kind of like the uh, historical numbers of their estimated sales. All Bradley, right. I'm going to have to admit, I did not know about that feature. You didn't know about that. Look at this. Watch that this. I can like is... zoom in on a certain period of time and go day by day. How cool is that? <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, that actually is really cool. I had no <laughs> idea that existed. All right, let me get that off. Woo, I got to do screen share. All right, let's go back to the questions from YouTube and Facebook here. Uh, this is about episode two from Naveen, and this was given to us in the Helium 10 users Facebook group. Naveen says, in Pinterest, you guys, or you guess the keyword coffin bookshelf as you are an expert, but as beginners, how could I imagine the keyword? So first of all, we didn't just... We didn't just guess that. Remember, we started on something completely different. What was that? Uh, sugar. sugar. Wait, hold sugar. on. I can't. There you go. Yeah, sugar, sugar, sugar skulls. Uh, we we uh, we started on, and then something else popped up, and we're like, "Hey, that looks pretty interesting." Yeah, and so that's the process. We were, looking, we were looking at the home decor, sugar skull mm -hmm. home decor, and literally the first thing. Remember, it was that giant tall shelf looking thing. Yeah, yeah. We, it, it was literally just bookshelf shaped like a coffin. So. Mm -hmm. So there isn't a magic button that you push that just like magically sprinkles out unicorn dust and great keywords. Like we have to use some creativity and figure out, hey, what do we even call that thing? Now we don't have to get it right. Like we could have called that thing a shelf shaped like a coffin. And when you search that in Amazon, take the top listings and do the reverse ASIN search, the Cerebro, Amazon's going to straighten us out and say, hey, you were close, but here's the actual most relevant keywords to this. So we're just guessing, like we're just describing something. Listen, that that thing that he just did the uh, the live uh, the live screen share on, I didn't know exactly what that thing was called. So I literally just typed it out, shelf for couch armrest. And if we took that listing and if we had done a Cerebro search on it, Amazon would have told us the most relevant keywords or what people are actually calling that thing. So all we have to do is start the process to guessing what the heck to call something. And then Amazon will do the rest of the work for us. Yep. Yep. Uh, by the way, Tim, uh, thank you, Cassandra. She just l let Sean know that we're at, uh, she's actually putting the questions that I'm missing on our, on our Google sheet. So we can look at Google, the Google sheet for some of the ones that we missed, but she went and put style points here. A uh, question about what is the exact PPC bid your competitors bidding? You can't really know that we're going to get into a little bit about that. That there, there's, a, I, I, I can't even mention it right now. 
Uh, we kind of mentioned it on the podcast that, that just dropped, it's right? About about mind. PPC test, yep. uh, PPC test listings. But but guys, that that just blew my mind when I I had never even heard of that when when Tim showed it to me. So that's like I don't know episode like five or six. But we're we're, we're gonna we're gonna get with you because the bottom line is even what Amazon tells you the bid is is complete bullcrap. Yeah, complete bullcrap. There you go. All right, let's go. Let's keep going here with the questions. Um, Sedonista Home says, looking forward to your session on product validation. I'm at that stage of the process. Perfect. Monday at 11 a.m. is when that episode will drop. As long as I can edit, we are still editing it right now. This is still fresh stuff. So, like, uh, I just edited the first half. I got to edit the rest, and people are going to be working through the weekend to make Man. sure that that gets ready. And let me tell you, there's not just one episode or one session on product validation. We're going to be doing product validation in different ways, different steps, different depths for like several episodes. So you're going to get just a rock star, just full bucket full of validation episodes. Don't worry. Barkus just uh, held up John Cusack style uh, uh, whiteboard says, my question is, how do you get reviews? <laughs> <laughs> so... Marcus, Marcus, of course, our follow-up product manager. He's just playing with us. He just wanted to get a shout out here. So, all right, Marcus, use the product or use the tool of Helium 10 that you're in charge of, and that's how you can get reviews. <laughs> all right, um, let's keep going. Uh, Kraga says, my organic ASIN was showing in position two, but it's disappeared today. Only my sponsor data is showing up. Uh, we, we call that the Amazon search shuffle. That really doesn't have to do with Project X, but I'll just hit it really quick. Uh, but yeah, that's the Amazon search search shuffle where they'll just like start showing you all over the place, depending on your different browsing scenarios and different browsers. You might be positioned to somewhere like somebody in, in Alabama who is searching for whatever you have, you know, you, you might be on two, page two or position two for them. You might be page two or position two on a, on a mobile browser, but Amazon switches things up uh, every now and then. Um, Dan was asking about the uh, slick deals, but again, that's not. Uh, that's not about the first couple episodes, so we'll skip that one. Let's see. Squeaks of A is just trying to take up all the questions here. You should only worry about BSR if you're a retail arbitrage or wholesale. Even, even then, uh, as long as you have Helium 10, you kind of know the sales you know, uh, for the product or within hey, you know, check 10, out, 20%. Check out Michael Folk's question right there. Like Where? four up. Mike, like I might be seeing it a different, a different... One because oh, I don't see Michael all the way to the bottom. Michael, it's, can you can you just like say it out loud because I can't find yeah, it here. So Michael Folk says we know about the trade shows in Canton, China. Are there any worthwhile in the USA? Absolutely. And in fact, I was on the phone today with the people that run Prosper and ASD. It's coming up in March. If you guys are not coming to Vegas at the end of March, if you can. And you're not going to, to, you're messing up because that's like the biggest week of e-commerce all year in the U.S. There's the Prosper Show. If you don't know the Prosper Show, ASD is just in the same convention center. ASD is like the largest random trade show. I say random because it's not like consumer electronic show or toy fair. And I'm there twice a year. ASD is there twice a year. And it's incredible. It is incredibly powerful to walk through and get product ideas. So come out. Uh, Helium 10 is doing some social stuff. Like all these other people in the e-commerce space are there with networking events that are free to come to. Make sure you're in March, the end, or I'm in Vegas, the end of March for ASD slash Prosper. Um, I'm even doing a workshop attached to ASD where we're doing this live in person, showing you how to walk through the ASD trade show and find product ideas, just like the video you saw of me doing in China in EWU. Mm -hmm. So March, Vegas, be there. All right. We got more questions here that I'm skipping over on purpose, actually. Uh, uh, like Dan, sorry, but the, the, about launching. The launch is is later on in Project X. So I really want to make sure everybody who had questions, the fresh questions in mind from what they saw in episode two, um, we'll get to those questions once that episode comes up. So guys, try and keep your questions about episode one and two. Uh, like Paulina also is talking about driving relevant traffic to your listing. We'll, we'll talk about that in a later episode. Um, uh, the handyman says, I'm joining late, but would like to see you talk about the steps. Uh, we're going to that. That's exactly what project X is handyman. So make sure to watch these episodes in order. And we are going step by step with everything. Um, Andreas, this is semi, uh, 
uh, about pro, uh, episode two because asking about the sales estimations. Is the revenue published on Helium 10 realistic? Where did the numbers come from? We have algorithms where we are able to estimate those sales. And I've done some live videos in Facebook where I'll just go into, you know, I'm not just going to tell you, publish some story that, oh, yeah, Helium 10 is the most accurate out there. I compare Helium 10's numbers to actual Amazon accounts. I, I put on my screen share and you can see how, how close those, those numbers are. And actually, oh, great question. Uh, OS Group, uh, talking about in episode two, we were showing black box sales estimation. It says, is the sales estimation measured by search keyword or only the results shown all of the product? The sales estimations you see anywhere in Helium 10 are overall sales, regard, you know, whether they come from PPC, whether they come from a keyword, wherever. So that's overall sales. Great question, OS Group. Um, all right. Let's keep going here. Let me switch back to the uh, older questions that we had. And somebody left a message here. Bradley, scroll up to line 14 with green highlights. <laughs> Who did that? Is that you, Tim? Well, it's all bouncing around. We're trying to hit the... Oh, oh line 11. okay. It's actually 11. line 11. Oh, okay. No, no. Here's another one. Here's a, here, here's a good question uh, here on... Uh, let's see. Great second part of the... This is from Johnny Jacobs. Great second part of the video. Really enjoyed it. Can you tell me a bit more about you market? Was that where that was where you are? Were were in that video, right? Yeah. And you, uh, yeah. I've been to a few, uh, Johnny says I've been to China a few times already, but not to the wholesale market. Are MOQ smaller than a factory? Great questions, Tim. That's all you because I've never been to you. Yeah. So I, I highlighted this one so you'd read it because people need to understand that there are more options than just Canton Fair. Canton Fair is great for a lot of things, but for this method specifically, I love the EWU market. To answer your question, yes, the MOQs are much smaller. So you're going to see throughout all of Project X how we test things and how we buy in small quantities to do these initial validations before and even launch. And don't judge what I just said. Wait till you see it actually in, in practice and it works. When I was filming, I was literally showing you how I'm finding those keyword ideas. So if you go to China and you've ever been to China and you haven't made it to Iwu, you're messing up. Iwu is magical. I still go to Canton Fair, but I actually spend more time a year in Iwu than I do Canton Fair because it's easier for me to find products. That's why I take clients there. We do trips. Like Iwu is amazing. So make sure that if if you're at least not going to China, that you're watching some of the training that I've done on Iwu so you can figure out the methods and you can apply those even to ASD and places like that. Yeehaw, Yee Woo. Woo! Okay, anyway. All right. Yeah, you, you gonna take me there one day, Tim? Yeah, when you want to go? This year sometime. I want to go. I think we're doing another group trip in like August. We'll we'll kick the dates out. I'll let you know. Count me in. I got my 10-year Chinese visa, so I'm I'm good to go. I always bring like five coaches, and you're worth at least two. So that saves me an extra plane ticket. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Uh Scott says. How can I tell, this is one of the ones that I skipped over today. Sorry, Scott. How can I tell the com competition level of our, of our particular keyword? Um, that That's kind of what we're going to go over in episode three. So that's a great question is, yeah, we found those keywords, but then how do we know how competitive it is? Tune in Monday at 11 a.m. Episode three will answer that exact question. Great question, Scott. Um, let's see here. All right. Let me go back to the live ones. Oh, man. I if you, if you knew, I wish I could screen share all the monitors and all these crazy things I'm trying to control here. <laughs> it's pretty crazy here. So excuse me if I miss some of your questions, guys. All right, let's see. Um, the handyman, I got to that question already. Squeaks of A is helping other people, answering Andreas's question. Um, here we go. Celeste says, if a niche is oversaturated, is it not to, go, it into? to go into? Yeah. What if there is no other product like it on Amazon? Could you still be successful with a lower search volume keywords? Tim, go ahead. We are going to answer that in later episodes. And I hate saying that, but the short answer is even if a niche is saturated, a niche, I say niche. Bradley says niche. I'm trying to be diplomatic, whatever. Um, Bradley also holds his pinky up when he drinks out of his coffee cup. So I'm just saying. Uh <laughs> I actually don't know if you do that, but I do. Um, no, I don't. Oh, <laughs> you don't? You, you had to test the bottle? Let's see. Hold on. I think I do. Yeah, I actually do. That's weird. Why did I just go out of focus? That was weird, too. Put your like, put your hands over. Like These are not the droids you're looking for, and that usually yeah. fixes it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Can we get back to the question? Yeah, oh, it's right there on the screen. So, so first off, a niche I don't think is ever oversaturated. A product can be oversaturated. All right. So let's say like those burrito blankets. Blankets are saturated. 
But if you can niche down and be the first one to launch the burrito blankets or the first one to launch the pizza blankets, then you found a unique product that is in a niche that or in a category, a product category that has a lot of volume. So I would say there's almost never a time when a niche, niche, whatever the heck you call it, is saturated. You just might have to find a unique product offering to offer to the followers of that niche. All right. Um, Rock jabs, the net profit margin you're targeting for. We'll get to that in a future episode. All right, let's see. Uh, okay, so for all the people talking about football here, Kearney says, sorry, guys, I got to go with my LSU Go Tigers. All right, can't, har can't argue with the national champion. Giyalk Tigers. <laughs> all right. Uh, ooh, here's a, here, here's one. Um, we're definitely going to get into a little bit later and, and tell you guys some options, but just to throw this, I just want to throw this up there to let you guys know, yes, we will be talking about uh, places other than China where you can source product from. Absolutely. Um, Christina, Christina says, how do you spell Ewu? Um, it is Y I W U. Yes. So Y I W U. All right. Christina was asking about how to get metrics for Pinterest and Etsy. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I don't have, I don't, Helium 10 doesn't have that. Maybe if enough people wanted that, we can, we can work on that. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I'd want, I'd want to do that. So guys, if you, if you guys want that, Send your suggestions to uh, support at helium10.com. Attention suggestions. All right. Melissa says, you showed the videos. Oh, no. We, we already got to this question, right? About are there any good markets in the U.S.? All right. So I can expand on that. I was mm -hmm. tooting the horn of ASD. Check out ASD. Uh, come to our workshop. There's going to be some cool stuff there. But the other ones that I like, I like uh, America's Mart in Atlanta. I love that one. It's kind of year round, but they have like a few big pushes a year. ASD is twice a year. If you're into toy, if you're into toys at all, or if you're not into toys at all, go to Toy Fair East and West. Toy Fair East is in New York. Toy Fair West is in Vegas, I believe, because again, we're looking for keyword ideas. So even if I don't sell a toy, I can show up to a Toy Fair and walk around, and get all these ideas and realize, holy cow, like koalas are big this year. Okay. So we know that, and I'm just speculating, but this is how my brain works. Like we know the Australian brush fire stuff is really devastating in Australia. Although it's of you in uh, Australia, prayers are with you. I know they've kind of dropped off the headlines. It's still really bad. Um, we're praying for you guys down there. But there's also been a lot of social media posts about kangaroos and koalas getting rescued. I suspect that this year at Toy Fair West, there's going to be a lot of plush koalas. Even not knowing the news in Australia, I could walk into that Toy Fair and go, oh my gosh, koalas are hot. Now let's let's niche down and sell koala everything, you know, koala um, hooded baby blankets. And no, don't do baby blankets, but like all sorts of different products. So just by going to these these trade shows with a general category that you're not interested in, you're just looking for keywords and ideas. Right. So there's a bunch of them. You can go um, you can search anything uh, where I would go. Actually, here's a good one. Go to Emerald Expo. Search this this um, company called Emerald Exped Expositions. They own and operate like 62 trade shows in the U.S. They actually own Prosper and ASD. That's just two of their 62 or 64. If you'll go to Emerald Expo's website, they'll have a list of all the trade shows that they run. I think they're the biggest in the country by far. So there's 62 trade shows listed for you. All right, guys. we got about 15 minutes left uh, here, so we got to hurry up with some of these. Thank you for all these questions. PW says, some categories, there's no data that shows up on X-Ray. Uh, and I think it looks, uh, or it's Amazon not sending it for that category. What's your advice to keep looking uh, or pass it? So yeah, what happens is there are some categories or some products where Amazon does not like provide BSR history for a product. So we can't use our algorithm to make an estimation on it. And that's basically up to you. I mean, I mean you, you got to kind of decide on your own, hey, is, is this something that has, you know, legs or not? But me personally, I, I'm, I'm not much of a risk taker. So like there is so much opportunity out there that I can validate, you know, using other me methods that I probably, for me personally, I would pass. But I know I know five other people at least who would probably be the opposite and be like, hey, I'll, I'll still take a chance because I fear that that uh, if this is selling well, maybe these other sellers are are avoiding this because of the same reason. They, they, they don't have the validation there. So it's up to how risky you want to you want to do, uh, do things. Um, let's see. Paulina says, can I get the link to the project X episodes that you are talking about? I don't seem to receive any notifications for this. All right, Paulina, make sure you're on YouTube right now. Uh, I'm assuming cause you, I wouldn't have got this message if you weren't, but 
go to where it says there should be like somewhere you can mouse over and it'll say subscribe now or, or turn on notifications. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. The previous episodes one and two are right here in the YouTube channel. So you hit helium 10 up above and you'll go to our latest up, uh, updated uh, videos and those, those will come up. Um, let's see here, Michael, we got to his question already. Let's see. Uh, Michael says, are you going to bring product uh, traffic outside of Amazon? We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but we're, that's way, way later because we're just in the product research stage still here on episodes one and two. So again, guys, try and keep the questions about product or episodes one and two, because I don't want to skip ahead and, and have to give spoiler alerts here. Yeah. While you're looking for next one, PW, the trade show in Atlanta is called America's Mart. America's Mart, one word. Cool. Tom says, how many average reviews is too many to compete against for Amazon UK market? Um, it, it depends. It, it's less. You know, it's less because because there's not that many in collagen peptides in the U.S. How, how we show it. it's like got 10. Everybody's got 10,000 reviews, right? Well, you're, you're not going to see that much in, in, in the UK. So it's ba basically you got to think to yourself. You got to think like a buyer. We always talk about that. But if do you, Tom, buy on Amazon UK? Like think about I mean, you do it subconsciously. But what is your behavior like me personally for the US if as a buyer if I don't if I see something that has less than 100 reviews and, and there's a whole bunch of, of ones on there that have like you know a few hundred like I don't even click on it like just subconsciously I'm like ah it's probably not I can't trust that product so it's just about each market's going to be different um, Mahmoud is talking about the validation pro uh, um, process that's next episode Mahmoud Let's see. Uh, we, we put Craig to sleep here. I'm going to bed. <laughs> so sorry, sorry we put you to sleep, but yeah, you're no, you're you're in Europe, I believe. So it's nighttime over there. Uh, Christina is going to ASD, so make sure Christina to come say hi uh, to our we, Helium Ten has a booth at. No, we don't. Yeah, we have a booth at Prosper, so come say hi to us at Prosper. We got a social event that's going to happen that day too. So make sure, guys, if you're watching this, uh, uh, Helium 10 users get first crack at our Helium 10 social. Last one, we, we, you were at the last one. You're at the part. You went on with us a party bus, and then we went to the we went from the party bus to the to the social, and and you had a lot of alcohol, if I if I remember, and you got your butt spanked on that <laughs> on the. Uh, well, what's that? What's that restaurant in Vegas where we went yeah, to? I, I don't think you gave enough details because that. Yeah, yeah, you got okay, you guys. Got and got spanked. It's yes, a, there's actually a restaurant in a restaurant that Helium 10 staff found. Like, let's take some of these VIPs there and they give you like this much food. And if you don't eat it, this little girl comes out with Popeye forearms and a wooden paddle and like spanks you with this paddle in the middle of this crowded restaurant. It only was a definitely experience there. Only in Vegas. It was ridiculous. Only in Vegas. I'm not going to lie. I shed a few tears. Yeah, and what happens in Vegas does not stay in Vegas because I just put Tim on blast to the whole <laughs> to the whole world right here. But all right, Richard says thanks for answering the questions. You guys rock. Looking forward to episode three on Monday. Excellent, excellent. Um, Christina says when is the ASD training? So the dates is March. Yeah. So what she's talking about is um, I'm doing a workshop oh, on you're, you're, okay on the Saturday. So ASD starts on Sunday. And the actual workshop itself that I'm doing in conjunction with ASD, it's like a partnership with them where I'm teaching a lot of the same stuff, but in like a workshop space is going to be that Saturday. And if you watch uh, Private Label Legion's Facebook page, I'll announce that uh, we're putting the page up tonight, actually. So, okay. Michael says, how can you get a quick reviews? That's going to be in a later episode. <laughs> we actually got surprised on, 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 on were, a couple of ways. There were times when we were like doing a certain thing and I'd have to message Bradley and go, holy crap, did you see all those verified reviews that just came in? And it was yep. amazing. So guys, wait wait for that for a future uh, episode here. All right, we're trying to catch up. Let's see. Here we go. Sarunas. I remember there's a basketball player, a famous basketball. I think it was from Lithuania. Sarunas Marcelonis. Back in the 80s. I'm aging myself. But anyways, um, Sharunas, are you from Lithuania? Is there is that even a country? I know a lot of the countries split up. That might not even be a country anymore. I don't even know. Stick All right. We're, yeah, we're, we're getting to the end here because my brain cells are, are going away. Anyways, <laughs> let me try and focus. Tim, can you, since I, I can't concentrate right now, can you read and answer this question, please? Since you don't even know how to say your own name, yes, I'll take this question. <laughs> With this search method, are you always trying to find those niches, niches, where you would be the only relevant seller. I wouldn't say that you have to be the only relevant seller. And remember, 
there are a lot of niches where there could be a lot of products that are complementary but not competitive, right? So don't think too much about owning an entire niche because that's really hard to do. So like what I said about koalas, there's going, but there, I mean, the niche of koalas, koala lovers is going up right now. We know that. But there's a million different products that you can sell within that niche. You just have to make sure that you're not being too uh, competitive or someone's not being too competitive against you on an exact same product, right? So it, it doesn't really it doesn't really quite work that way, I guess, is the short answer. All right. Um, let's I'm not exactly sure what Nora is saying here. Uh, same product has complete different search results for different search terms. Can I get in if the abbreviated version of the word is untapped yet? Oh my goodness, she's talking about long tail and short tail. Oh, okay, that's a, okay. Thank you for translating. <laughs> so, yes. would you like to tackle Nor, that? One? We are going to hammer this like in the next two or three episodes combined. It's going to be awesome. But yes, there are so many different ways that a product can be successful with one keyword, but not another keyword. Um, how do you spell pomegranate? Do you know? You really think I know how to spell pomegranate? <laughs> All right. That's my point. Nobody knows how to spell pomegranate. So if I'm trying to sell a pomegranate peeler or a pomegranate slicer or whatever, I'm going to research exactly how to spell that correctly. But not everybody that's searching for it on Amazon is. So it might be that the pomegranate peeler is saturated under the keyword correctly spelled pomegranate peeler. But I have seen people with that exact same product selling selling it under the misspelled keyword and crushing it right so yes a product that may be saturated under one search term could be wide open on another search term for the same product okay all right guys uh we're gonna have to cut it uh cut it off here but at the very end um i'm gonna do something that, that nobody was prepared for it just came to my mind right now oh, great. but how would you guys like to win a helium 10 t-shirt the one that I'm wearing right now, unwatt, no, just plain, uh, a brand new <laughs> Helium 10 t-shirt. All right. So um, what I want you guys to do, is, and the reason what, what made me think of this is this question right here. Where is it? Um, somebody, here we go. Current, current, Kearney asks, well, did we disclose the keyword winner for episode two? Uh, unfortunately, I didn't count those votes yet from the comments. So at, uh, at the end of episode two, uh, Tim, what we had done is we had asked uh, people, hey, which of these five keywords, all right, uh, and the five were uh, party, baby shower party favors, yeah. uh, coffin bookshelf, egg cartons, um, burrito blanket, and I'm missing one. Axe. Oh, like the, the, the axe throwing thing. Yeah. yeah, the axe. All right, so what we're going to do right now is what I, I want to see everybody's votes right now. So right now, Go ahead and crash my computer so, with your comments. The thing is, if you voted before, we don't care. We're starting. Yeah, we don't care if you voted. No, I'm just playing. We care. We'll, we'll go tally those up. But care. I want to do something cool and live. Everybody, first of all, everybody, right before you vote, hit the thumbs up on the bottom of this video. There's a thumbs up if you're on your desktop. I, I don't have it on, on YouTube. I'm, I'm using a different software. But there should be a thumbs up thing. So give us a thumbs up so we can get to to uh, 100. If we can get, get to 100 thumbs ups, then uh, we'll give two T-shirts out. All right, so that's some bull crap. I say five t-shirts. Five t-shirts. You're oh, going crazy. Five five so generous. Shit. All right. Well, is somebody on YouTube right now who can tell us what the uh, what the thumbs up count is right now? So we'll go. We'll go five t-shirts. We'll go five t-shirts if it hits 100. What what is it up to now? Can anybody see? I'm not on YouTube. Sean, are you there? Can you tell me? What are we at? Let me go to the Helium 10 page right now. I think Sean has like already checked out. Uh, let's see. We were up to, we're up to 40. Okay. So we're up to 40. So definitely one t-shirt, but if we get up to 100 before it's over, uh, we'll go ahead and give, we'll go ahead and give a uh, five out. All right. So go ahead and vote. Which of the five keywords do you guys think, uh, is going to be, or, or is your favorite and you think that's going to be like a great product? So let's see, let's see what people are voting for. Are determining the winner. I'm just gonna pick a random one, or I'm gonna have a Cassandra pick a random one here. Yeah. All right. Um, we don't trust you, Cassandra. You're gonna have. Yeah, to Cassandra is trusted. All right. Kearney says hatchet. Marbro says hatchet. Anton says the BSR burrito. Mandeep says the axe. Edie <laughs> says, "What's the question?" <laughs> uh, Tax Ted says axe. Um, <laughs> Extra large man, hatchet. <laughs> Celeste pick, picks the hatchet. Uh. Needy says 38. 
<laughs> CC uh, Beauty says 36. What happened? Why, why are we doing numbers here, guys? This is not numbers. Many, you asked how many thumbs up there were. No. Yes. I'm, oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought, okay, I'm behind. I'm like five Dude, minutes left. I'm like five minutes behind. Did your brain here. pick up right now? So no, I'm, because but, you know, did, did you ever listen to the AMAs that we did on Facebook? So yeah. what, what I would do to win the T-shirts is I would say, "Give me a number from one to hundred, and then that's how I would. So I thought that was what was happening right now, but there we go. So it looks like, I mean, I'm not doing exact math here, but it looks like everybody's saying axe, right? Saying the axe, that the hatchet. I mean, everybody that's just crushing it right now. Hatchet, Barbara. Oh, you, you know what? I think we should have we should have probably done this. We <laughs> that was a cool keyword that we found, right? That was a cool keyword. Yeah. Could you imagine how hard it'd be to wash that thing out? You know, like you've got that straw and little squirted with like thick yeah. sauce. Oh, everybody's saying the, uh, the ax I'm seeing the ax and number two looks like burrito blanket. Okay, cool. It's, it's All right. Thing. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, actually, before we go off, uh, uh, Cassandra, can you give us the, uh, the winner who, who is the winner that you pick randomly here to get the t-shirt and then what do they need to do to, what do they need to do to get the information um, to us? Uh, I think they should. They can just send an email to uh, support and with their name. Yeah. All right. See. But there's got to be like a, a DM that we can do or an email or something because otherwise everybody's gonna say, "Oh yeah, I am a, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I'm the handyman from YouTube." You know, like you know, <laughs> how do we verify that? So Cassandra, I'm sorry for putting this on you. You're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna get the T-shirt to our our winning person, but Cassandra is going to announce the winner here in a little bit. Um, and we'll get you guys free helium 10 t-shirt. I love that people are even saying things that we didn't even target on like skull spoons. I like Anthony's product here. <laughs> it means people are actually watching this episode and paying attention. So you guys are awesome. Thank you. Hey, and listen, it's encouraging that you guys are watching this and following along because you would not believe, and I'm not saying this to like be self-righteous, but you would not believe the amount of effort it took to do this. Like my butt was on an airplane constantly to be in their office shooting this and like up at midnight, 1 a.m. working on this and behind the scenes, guys, like you guys don't even know about Kevin and Mika and Anthony and like everybody that has like there are probably that would you say, Bradley, there are thousands of man hours involved in this project? Absolutely. That's Absolutely. Perfectly, a perfectly accurate statement to say thousands of hours. So the fact that you guys are watching that is reassuring because it means that all of this work was worth it. So that's my like soppy close out to the AMA. Thank you all for watching this because I promise it will be worth it. If it doesn't like make golden, you know, eggs rain down on your house, it'll at least give you some really cool things to think about. Right. And, and maybe even just being part of this community is, is going to be enough to help you get over that next hurdle, that next bump to keep taking your business to the next level. So we love you. Thank you all for watching. And this is going to be awesome as we continue to go week by week. Yeah, guys. So just remember, uh, if you're just joining us, uh, until we go through the whole thing, we are launching new episodes, uh, with a live premiere on Mondays and Wednesdays where myself, sometimes Tim, if he has time are live, not tweeting i want to say live tweeting but we're kind of like live commenting on the video uh at 11 a.m pacific center time every monday and wednesday and then come back next friday we'll have another ama ask me anything episode i should probably say it should be ama as long as it's about the previous week's episode because it's not really ask me anything we, we want to keep it kind of focused yeah. to what we're doing on project x we're not gonna be able to go back so if you're watching an ama two weeks from now we can't really talk about stuff in episode two unless it's relevant to the episodes we just dropped yeah. So guys, thank you so much again. And we will see you on Monday for the episode of premiere uh, of premiere <laughs> of uh, project X episode three. See you guys I later. You. Bye -bye. I beat you.